Hey everybody, welcome to Money's No Object. I'm your host, Dylan Howell. This is episode number 430 of our YouTube channel and podcast, and I cannot be more excited to continue sharing with you guys personal finance topics that I think could be useful for you in your long-term financial journey. Today, I want to have a little fun, right? I, I know I'm very educational most days, and I think this will be pretty educational too, but uh, not educational in the way that you know you might want to act based on it, but just you might go, hmm, that's interesting. Uh, so what I want to cover today uh, are the 30 best stocks of the last 30 years. And I think you'll be surprised by some and not so surprised by others, but you'll see the types of things that have worked uh, over the past 30 years for investors and exactly how uh, a lot of this wealth creation has come about in the stock market. So uh, hopefully this is interesting and uh, you know we can get through all 30 uh, of these stocks in a pretty timely manner uh, and that you can just see that the stock market can create and will create uh, into the future lots of wealth for investors. So stick around for a discussion of all that and more in today's episode. Before we get started though, if you could go down below, hit the big red subscribe button, like this video, leave me any feedback in the comments down below and I'll be sure to respond to anything you leave down there. If you're listening on Apple or Spotify podcast, be sure to subscribe and leave me a review on either one of those platforms. Follow me on social media at MNO with Dylan. And that's really good supplemental materials to all the things I'm putting out in these long form episodes on YouTube and the podcast every single day. Then if you need somebody to help you to build a financial plan and keep you accountable to that plan over the long term, then I can do that. Just DM me on any of the major social media sites and tell me that you are interested in financial coaching sessions and you and I can begin working together, pushing towards your long-term financial goals and ultimately pushing you on towards long-term financial freedom, which is what I hope for every single individual who's watching or listening to this show on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, today is not about giving you investment advice, right? Today is not about saying invest in these stocks. Today is about saying, hey, let's look at what has worked the last 30 years. Let's look at this elite group uh, of stocks globally that has created the most wealth for shareholders over the past three decades, right? So let's get right into it, right? We'll start at number 30 and work all the way to number one, and we'll keep the suspense going the entire time. So uh, first one, uh, NVIDIA, right? Uh, and NVIDIA, it's uh, NVDA, has $309.4 billion of wealth created, uh, an annualized dollar-weighted return of 27.5%. Uh, they only recently muscled their way into the best stocks of the past three decades. Uh, indeed, although the maker of graphics processing units, GPUs, was founded in 1993, it didn't go public until 99. And although NVIDIA uh, was a longtime market beater over the next decade plus, and by a wide margin, uh, shares went truly ballistic only in the last few years. And so we see that big increase in shareholder uh, return. So a semiconductor maker, NVIDIA, number 30 on the list. Number 29, uh, a company that we, most of us know and most of us love, uh, Walt Disney. Okay. Disney, D-I-S, as the ticker symbol, uh, created $311.6 billion uh, in shareholder wealth, a 10.6% annualized dollar weighted return. Right? It's just one of the best stocks of the past 30 years. It's also uh, one of the top stocks of all time. Uh, shareholders can thank Disney's adaptability into an ever-changing media landscape for their outsized returns. In the past 20 years alone, Disney has gobbled up Pixar, Marvel, uh, Lucasfilm, 21st Century Fox, ESPN, all these types of things, uh, and really increased shareholder value. So that's number 29, Walt Disney. Number 28, Oracle, um, and Oracle that is O-R-C-L, ticker symbol. Wealth created $318.5 billion, uh, annualized dollar-weighted return of 19.5%. Uh, they were founded in 1977 and publicly traded since 86. Got its start as a provider of database management software. As much as any high-tech company of the era, uh, it rode the late 1990s tech bubble to lofty heights and then crashed. A long, slow recovery followed. It took 14 years to regain its pre-crash its pre -crash peak, uh, driven by a wide portfolio of software aimed at corporate customers. So, number 28, Oracle. Okay, uh, so Like I said, some of these companies you guys may know, some of you may not. Uh, if you, you know watch the Golden State Warriors, you know what Oracle is uh, very well. Number 27, uh, LVMH, 
right? Uh, that's Moet Hennessy Louis Vuitton, okay? Uh, and that is going to be wealth created of $327.3 billion, uh, annualized dollar weighted return of 12.4%, uh, and their ticker symbol uh, LVMUY, uh, and they are proof positive that luxury pays. The French conglomerate's uh, operations comprise a sort of who's who uh, in the luxe living fashion house Louis Vuitton. Prestige brands, watches, perfumes, jewelry, all these different types of things. The list goes on. The company was formed in 1987 uh, and the company uh, continued with an acquisition type path and today uh, claims 75 prestige brands uh, organized into six business groups. So uh, number 27 on the list, uh, we'll just call it Louis Vuitton. Okay, now, number 26 on the list, um, this is a company that we should all be familiar with, Coca-Cola. Okay, wealth created by Coca-Cola, $329.5 billion, 12.9% uh, annualized dollar weighted return, right? Um, not really making that rate of return too much anymore, but uh, that has been historically... So tech stocks have been the market darlings over the past three decades, but that doesn't mean that classic consumer brands have automatically gone out of fashion. Uh, Coca-Cola, whose uh, ticker is KO, not CO, KO, uh, is a member of the Dow Jones Industrial Average and a dividend stalwart and one of Warren Buffett's all-time favorite stocks. Um, it's, maintained, it's maintained its edge over decades by adding teas, coffee, sports and energy drinks, bottled water, juices, a dairy and plant-based beverage to its portfolio of fizzy refreshments. Uh, it has an ever-expanding lineup and its wealth creation record and generous rising dividend uh, have led to a lot of wealth creation. So that's Coca-Cola at number 26. Number 25, Intel. Uh, Intel wealth created $340.2 billion with a 16% annualized dollar weighted return over the last 30 years. Uh, Intel's ticker INTC. Uh, has been one of the best stocks of the past 30 years, but it's hard to see the semiconductor maker uh, extending that record for another 30 years. Founded in 1968, uh, it's an old timer among technology companies and the chip maker's longevity has paid off handsomely for shareholders. Uh, it's early start positioned the company to run away with market uh, for chips that served as a computer's brain. Uh, Intel had close to 100% market share in CPUs for personal computers at one point. It continues to claim around 80% today. Most of our uh, PCs, we know they run on Intel. Number 24, whether you want to hear it or not, um, it has been very profitable, Altria. Now, Altria, ticker symbol MO, hasn't always been known as Altria, but uh, we'll get there. Wealth created, uh, $364.6 billion, 17% annual dollar weighted return. Now, this is another stock whose greatest days of wealth creation are probably behind it, but hey, you never know. The tobacco company doesn't have uh, the greatest earnings growth prospects uh, given ever-growing restric restrictions against its primary product, but it does uh, generate a river of reliable free cash flow, which it returns to its shareholders in the form of a generous dividend. Um, so they're best known for Marlboro cigarettes. Um, and obviously they have, um, you know, been called Altria, uh, but it's Philip Morris basically, right? And that has been uh, what it's been known as for many, many years. So Altria at number 24 on the list. Number 23, United Health Group. Uh, wealth created by UNH, uh, United Health Group, $370.2 billion, uh, an annualized dollar weighted return of 21.2%. Uh, so a string of acquisitions has helped make them the largest health insurance company by market value and revenue and by wide margins at that. It's also the most influential stock in the price weighted Dow Jones because the Dow is driven by the price of each stock. The company is incorporated under a United Healthcare name in 1977 and went pro public in 84. Since then, it hasn't looked back. Along the way, has beefed up its businesses by buying and merging uh, with Metra Health, HealthWise of America, and AmeriChoice, among many others. So uh, that's number 23 on the list, uh, UNH. Number 22, and um, this list is admittedly a month and a half old. And I would guess this is not at 22 today, but we'll talk about it anyway, right? And 22, that is Alibaba. 
And the reason I say that is because Alibaba stock has been a whirlwind, um, a lot of negativity uh, in the recent past. But wealth created as of early February, $374.1 billion, annualized dollar weighted return 17.2%. Right. Although it has cooled off, China's economy uh, experienced a kind of explosive expansion over the last three decades uh, that has rarely been seen on a historical world stage. Uh, the Middle Kingdom's e-commerce growth has been equally stunning. Uh, so it should come as no surprise that Alibaba or Baba, B-A-B-A, -B -A, uh, their ticker, makes an appearance on this list. Uh, the e-commerce giant is often called the Amazon of China. And if they are anything like Amazon, you know they will create a lot of wealth or have created a lot of wealth for shareholders. So number 22, Alibaba. Although that may not be uh, perfect today, it was perfect uh, a month and a half ago. Now, uh, number 21 on the list, MasterCard. Wealth created 374.9 billion, 33% annualized dollar weighted return. We all know what MasterCard is, the uh, ticker's MA. Um, credit cards, right? Credit cards, debit cards, all these types of things. We know what MasterCard's about. Um, and uh, Warren Buffett even has, you know, a position that he's held for a while. So uh, MasterCard is number 21. Number 20, uh, excuse me if I mispronounce, but uh, I'm going to go with Roche or Roche. Uh, and they have created $377.3 billion in shareholder wealth. 14.1% annualized dollar weighted return. Uh, and this is a Swiss healthcare giant uh, with ticker RHHBY. It's the world's largest pharmaceutical company by market value and the second largest uh, by trailing 12 month revenue. The holding company also has large diagnostics business, uh, but the pharma division uh, gets most attention from the global investors. So number 20, uh, Roche or Roche. Number 19, Visa, right? So Visa and MasterCard, no surprise that they're pretty close on the list. Uh, Visa has created $385 billion in uh, wealth. Uh, their annualized dollar weighted return is 23.8% annually. Uh, their stock symbol is V. Uh, and they weren't even known as Visa back when the company got its start in 1958 uh, after Bank of America launched its Bank AmeriCard credit card program uh, but as the card gained popularity abroad, the name was changed in 1976 to Visa because it was easier to pronounce. Today, Visa operates the world's largest payments network. Uh, despite its short life as a publicly traded company and the ill timing of its IPO, they went public in March of 08 during the global financial crisis. The stock has already created $385 billion in wealth for shareholders uh, and including dividends, their stock has returned 861% over the last 10 years, and that beats the S&P 500 total return by nearly 490 percentage points. So, uh, number 19 on the list, Visa. Number 18 on the list, I'm going to do my best with this name as well. Uh, can we go with uh, Motai? right? So, excuse me if that was a Chinese company, so excuse me if that's incorrect. Uh, wealth created $395.9 billion, annualized dollar-weighted return 39%. So China's growth over the past three decades into the world's second largest economy has made fortunes across a range of industries, and that definitively extends to booze. Uh, as much has been made about the Middle Kingdom's unbalanced economy, uh, that it depends too much on investment and too little on consumption, don't tell that to shareholders in this company. Um, the company, which trades only on the Shanghai Stock Index, is the world's largest beverage company with a market value of roughly $345 billion. And in distant second uh, is Di Diageo, uh, which has less than half of this Chinese company's market capitalization. So uh, they are number 18 on the list. Number 17, the Home Depot. Okay, Wealth created by Home Depot, $399.8 billion dollars annualized dollar weighted return of 16.6%. Home Depot's ticker HD is the nation's largest home improvement retailer and publicly traded company since 1981. It was included in the S&P 500 index in 1988 and added to the Dow in 99. As great a wealth creator as HD has been, the bulk of its outperformance has come in only the last decade or so. 
The collapse of the housing market that precipitated the Great Recession of the late 2000s was a painful period for Home Depot. Uh, its resurgence on the back of low mortgage rates coupled with a shortage of new houses uh, prompted homeowners to stay put and renovate. And more recently, the pandemic uh, is what truly made investors fortunes. So including dividends, uh, shares in Home Depot rose about 1,240% over the past decade according to Y charts. So that's uh, quite the fantastic return. So Home, De Home Depot number 17, number 16, JP Morgan Chase. Wealth created uh, $414.1 billion, uh, annualized dollar weighted return of 9.8%. Uh, JP Morgan Chase is JPM uh, stock symbol. Uh, it traces its roots all the way back to 1799 when the Manhattan Company was chartered to supply clean water to New York City. It's come a long way since. Uh, today, it's a sprawling multinational financial powerhouse that ranks as the nation's largest bank by assets. Thanks to decades of mergers and acquisitions, the bank boasts more than 1,200 predecessor uh, institutions, including Chase Manhattan Bank, Bank One, Manufacturers Hanover Trust, Chemical Bank, and Bear Stearns, just to name a few. So uh, J.P. Morgan Chase, number 16 on the list. Number 15 uh, used to be the largest company in the world, uh, Exxon Mobil. Exxon Mobil created uh, $437.1 billion uh, in shareholder wealth, 10.7% annualized dollar weighted return. Their ticker symbol is XOM. Uh, the future looks to be very different from the recent past for them. Uh, after all, the outlook for fossil fuels and its relevance to the U.S. economy has radically changed since 1990. Uh, their removal from the Dow Jones in 2020 only underscored this new reality. Nevertheless, the integrated energy giant sure had a heck of a run. Over the last 30 years, amid cycles of oil booms and busts, uh, they generated more than $437 billion in wealth. Shareholders can thank the company's policy of regular dividend increases for much of that windfall. So uh, number 15 on the list is ExxonMobil. Number 14, Procter & Gamble, right? Uh, so with wealth created of $451.1 billion and an annualized dollar weighted return of 13.1%, uh, PG is their ticker symbol. Uh, they are another consumer product stock that created outsized wealth for shareholders after the, over the past three decades, uh, even as tech stocks got all the glory. Uh, partly that's due to the Dow component's defensive characteristics, demand for products such as Charmin toilet paper, Crest toothpaste, Tide laundry detergent, Pampers diapers, and Gillette razors tends to remain stable in both good and bad times. So uh, no surprise, just about all of our household items are P&G items. So uh, number 14 is Procter & Gamble. Number 13, Nestle. So wealth created uh, $478.1 billion and an annualized dollar weighted return of 13.2%. Um, so their ticker symbol NSRGY. So speaking of consumer product stocks, uh, none has created more wealth over the past three decades than Switzerland's Nestle. It's also no coincidence that the, Lord, that the world's largest food company by revenue uh, is a dividend stalwart. Uh, the European dividend aristocrat has a quarter century of stable uh, or rising payouts to its name. So um, that would be the 13th best stock of the past 30 years of Nestle. Number 12 on uh, this list is Berkshire Hathaway. So Warren Buffett's own Berkshire Hathaway. Uh, wealth created $504.1 billion, uh, an annualized dollar weighted return of 11.7%. This is also a stock that uh, it may have moved up on this, this list over the past uh, couple months, but nonetheless, uh, it has been you know fantastic for shareholders. It should come as no surprise that the greatest value investor of all time would be behind one of the best stocks of the past 30 years. Warren Buffett took control of Berkshire Hathaway, BRK.A for the A shares and B for the B shares as the ticker symbol. Uh, so they were a struggling textile manufacturer in the early 1960s, and it quickly became clear that the U.S. textile manufacturing was in decline, so Buffett decided to shift gears. By the late 1960s, Buffett had already diversified into banking, insurance, and newspaper publishing, and he never looked back. They're now a holding company for uh, many dozens of diverse businesses, selling everything from underwear through Fruit of the Loom or insurance policies through Geico. 
Uh, key acquisitions since 1990 include the aforementioned Geico, uh, BNSF Railway, uh, Lubrizol, uh, Precision Cast Parts, and General Ray. Uh, so Berkshire also has been a vehicle for Buffett to invest in stocks, which he has done shrewdly and successfully um, with Apple being their biggest holding now. So Berkshire Hathaway, number 12. Number 11, a Taiwan Semiconductor. So wealth created $525.5 billion uh, with 18.3% annualized dollar-weighted return. The digital revolution is a running theme when it comes to the best stocks of the past three decades, and it also uh, follows that Taiwan Semiconductor should make the list. Uh, the second largest semiconductor manufacturer by market value after NVIDIA and revenue after Intel it was founded in 1987. A decade later, the world's original dedicated semiconductor foundry became the first Taiwanese company to be listed on the New York Stock Exchange and has created shareholders lots of wealth ever since. So that's number 11 on the list, Taiwan Semi. Number 10, so top 10 here, Johnson & Johnson, uh, $535.3 billion in wealth created, 13.9% annualized dollar-weighted return. Uh, J and J cracks the top ten best stocks of the past thirty years as a three-headed giant. Alas, the corporate structure that served investors so well is coming to an end. It's set to split off its consumer health health businesses, uh, the one that makes Tylenol, Listerine, and Band Aid from its pharmaceutical and medical devices divisions. Uh, the breakup is meant to free the faster growth, higher margin parts, and um, you know leave the less profitable operations uh, to a company of their own. So number ten, J and J. Number nine, Samsung Electronics. Um, so wealth created $540.6 billion, 20.2% uh, annualized dollar-weighted return. Uh, they have been one of the biggest beneficiaries of globalization over the last 30 years. We know the phones, the TVs, all the things uh, that have been fantastic for Samsung at number nine. Number eight, Meta Platforms, or as you and I know it uh, or have known it for so long, uh, Facebook right? Uh, so wealth created $553.7 billion uh, with annualized dollar-weighted return of 30.4%, uh, ticker symbol FB still. So they got off to a rocky start when they went public under the Facebook name in uh, May of 2012 at $38 a share. Technical glitches marred the IPO and the stock traded below the IPO price for more than a year. Since then, however, it's been nothing but blue, blue skies and then some. Uh, their share price has gained roughly 800% in its relatively short life, creating more than $553 billion in wealth. Uh, the S&P 500 is up about 250% in price basis over the same period. Number seven on the list is Walmart, WMT. Uh, they've created $568.7 billion uh, in wealth. That's 13.5% annualized dollar-weighted return. And so it stands to reason that the world's largest retailer happens to have one of the best performing stocks over the long haul. Uh, from humble beginnings as a single discount store, it now uh, operates approximately 10,500 retail locations under 48 nameplates in 24 countries and employs 2.2 million workers. It all, also happens to be the largest company in the world by revenue. So that is Walmart, WMT. At number six in the list, Tesla, right? Uh, so wealth created $639.3 billion uh, with a 65.4% annualized dollar-weighted return. So Tesla's ticker TSLA, uh, their annualized return towers over every other name on the list, but as much wealth as the electric vehicle maker has created in its relatively short life, it has done so with gut-riching volatility. Isn't that the truth? You can chalk up their astounding wealth creation and roller coaster price performance uh, to its CEO, Elon Musk. Uh, the market isn't just enthralled with the superiority of Tesla's vehicles and the prominence of the EV industry as a whole. It also loves Musk. Uh, similar to the Steve Jobs at Apple, uh, Musk's showmanship, uh, close identification with the company, and his evident genius is a major selling point to number six on this list of Tesla. So now we're to the top five. Number five, Tencent. Right, so uh, they have created $691.7 billion in wealth. That's a 48.1% annualized return. So ticker TCEHY. Uh, the Chinese multinational technology conglomerate that has delivered an annualized dollar-weighted return of more than 48% over the past three decades. 
Investors can thank the company's sprawling operations and the world's largest consumer market for these eye-popping results. Founded in 1998, it's the world's largest vendor of video games and has massive footprints in social media, music, e-commerce, payment systems, venture capital, and much, much more. So number five on the list is Tencent. Number four, Alphabet. No surprise there, right? Uh, so wealth created 979.1 billion annualized dollar weighted return of 19.3%. Ticker here, G-O-O-G-L. Um, so we know the alphabet is um, the parent for Google. And they certainly made the most of their relatively short time as a publicly traded company. Shares of what has been known as Google, uh, the corporate name was changed to Alphabet in uh, 2015, were initially offered to the public less than 20 years ago. And by the end of the first trading day, the company was worth 27 billion. Today's um, Google or Alphabet market value is about 2 trillion. Uh, the Google search engine is Alphabet's most important business, but it's not its only one, thus the corporate name change. It's also home to self-driving car startup, uh, Nest Labs, and all other types of things that just are super valuable and are creating a lot of wealth for shareholders. So that's number four on the list, Alphabet. So now we're up to the top three. Okay, I bet we can guess what they are, but uh, let's just go for it. Number three, Amazon.com. Okay. Wealth created $1.57 trillion with a 31.1% annualized dollar weighted return. AMZN uh, is their ticker, uh, which began its life as a modest website for book buyers, went public in 1997, has created nearly $1.6 trillion in shareholder value. Uh, the performance is all the more remarkable considering that most of the best stocks of all time goose their returns by paying out generous dividends for decades, and they have not. Uh, their emergence as the nation's largest e-commerce company is only part of the story behind its extraordinary wealth creation. The firm is a giant in the fast-growing industry of cloud-based services and a leader in streaming media, content creation, and digital advertising. So that's number three on our list, Amazon. Number two, Microsoft. $1.91 trillion of wealth created, 19.2% annualized dollar-weighted return. Microsoft is MSF. T. So not long ago, their glory days looked to be behind them as sales of desktop PCs slipped into seemingly irreversible decline amid the consumer shift to mobile technology. Although the dot-com days of the 90s minted many a Microsoft millionaire, the aftermath of the tech bust left Microsoft stock to trade mostly sideways for a decade. But the past 10 years have been nothing short of a renaissance for the software giant. Their focus on enterprise customers and most importantly, its shift to selling cloud-based services such as uh, Azure and Office 365 have been, have been astounding successes. Today, it's a dominant player in cloud computing and the stock price shows it. So that's number two on the list, Microsoft. Number one on the list, no surprise to anybody, is Apple. Okay, Wealth created here, uh, $2.67 trillion dollars with an annualized dollar weighted return of 23.5%. Uh, Apple is AAPL. Uh, they had a better time of it than Microsoft in the decade following the burst of the tech bubble, um, and that is quite an understatement. True, Apple stock traded sideways for the first few years of the 21st century, but an explosion of innovation soon put that to an end. Under the leadership of Steve Jobs, Apple essentially reinvented itself for the mobile age, launching revolutionary gadgets such as the iPod, MacBook, and iPad. But what really set Apple on its course to becoming the world's largest publicly traded company and the greatest wealth creator of the past 30 years was the 07 debut of the iPhone. Uh, today, today, they aren't just a purveyor of gadgets. Uh, it sells an entire ecosystem of personal consumer electronics and related services. And its sticky ecosystem was enough to get, you know, someone like Warren Buffett interested in making it uh, Berkshire Hathaway's third business by owning so much of the stock. So number one, Apple. So I hope you at least found that kind of interesting to hear this list, see where these companies rank and to see uh, what has created shareholders so much value over the last 30 years. I know this episode's a little different, but uh, maybe I'll do more like this if you guys like it. Um, if not, let me know. I won't. Okay. Um, but maybe we can do some other lists, rankings, things, um, that are, that are interesting. Um, and that may, uh, just lead us to think a little more about what may, um, be the best things to invest in, uh, in our investing lives in the future. So 
Uh, thanks for watching this video. If you could go down below, hit the big red subscribe button, like this video, leave me any feedback in the comments down below, and I'll be sure to respond to anything you leave down there. If you're listening on Apple or Spotify podcast, be sure to subscribe and leave me a review on either one of those platforms. Follow me on social media at MNO with Dylan. And that's really good supplemental materials to all the things I'm putting out in these long form episodes on YouTube and the podcast every single day. And then if you need somebody to help you to build a financial plan and keep you accountable to that plan over the long term, then I can do that. Just DM me on any of the major social media sites and tell me that you are interested in financial coaching sessions and you and I can begin working together, pushing towards your long-term financial goals and ultimately pushing you on towards long-term financial freedom, which is what I hope for every single individual who's watching or listening to this show on a day-to-day -day basis. So tune in Monday as I continue talking about personal finance topics that I think could be useful for you in your long-term financial journey. So thanks for tuning into this episode of Money's No Object. I'm your host, Dylan Howell. God bless.